For Creamer Media's Polity, I'm Shannon DeRayhove. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me for Sutner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. The Sunday Times referred to the South African democracy as maturing, and I quote, the maturity of our democratic system was further demonstrated this week, I think meaning last week, as a nation as the nation held another free, fair and peaceful election. What do you think, do you think that's a valid statement? Um, that sort of statement is part of a wider discourse where political scientists uh, have a sort of an industry almost asking whether democracy has been consolidated. And I think this started at the time of the fall of the Soviet Union and uh, f other communist-led states and the transition from military rule in many parts of Africa towards states which held elections. And they then said that uh, they want, they set up various measurements to establish whether democracy had been consolidated. And they focused on elections and this was again part of the discourse around those words good governance and if you practice good governance you could count on getting funds from certain agencies now um, i have some problems with this um, approach because it derives from also from latin america where there was a transition from authoritarian rule to democracy, uh, to representative democracy. My problem with it is, in general, that it tends to fetishize elections. To If you have a free and fair election, well, then you've got democracy. Mm -hmm. But along with the packages, this goes along with rewarding states. The way they reward them is they say we will give you funding if you have free and fair elections but also if you withdraw the state from the economy. You don't subsidize bread, you uh, don't involve the state in this, that and the other. And um, that has been uh, part of the associations with the notion of consolidation of democracy, what some people m mockingly refer to as consolidology. Now, South Africa has come under criticism 10 years ago. It's not as fashionable as now. South Africa, it was said, has not really consolidated its democracy because in order for democracy to be consolidated, there needs to be the potential circulation of elites, in their words. In other words, if the ANC is likely to win elections for the foreseeable future, democracy is not consolidated. Mm -hmm. Now, when this, democ when this type of writing was current, I criticized it because I argued that it was dogmatic. There's no reason why you can say that uh, an opposition party coming into power necessarily makes for good debate and things like that. And I argued then, uh, which I wouldn't argue now, that a debate within the ANC may well be, uh, be a better safeguard than hoping for one of the opposition parties to come to power, which was very unlikely then. I also pointed to the Chapter 9 institutions mm -hmm. and so on. So um, I don't agree with uh, the emphasis in the Sunday Times article is we've held elections, we are therefore maturing. Mm -hmm. The question really is what is happening beyond elections? Is the constitution being observed or is it being undermined? Mm -hmm. And um, since 2004, when I was reacting against these people who, they, they also talk about a dominant party system. 
and they would would argue that because the ANC was dominant, elections couldn't be, I mean, democracy couldn't be consolidated. They were also focused on elections, as if that's the only place where you look for democracy. And in the column I've written this week, I've made it very clear that I believe that you have to look at elections, but also beyond elections. What do you see as the main threats to our democracy, and how do you think these could be addressed? It's interesting, some of the threats that I see now may already have been there in 2004, but at the moment they have matured, or let's say they've got worse. And um, definitely the Constitution <coughs> is, is being undermined in the sense that the level of violence which is under the authority of the state violence which is not being accounted for within the norms of legality has e increased extensively and the signs are that they are trying to evade accountability. We, we read this week that the terms of reference of the Fallen Commission have been amended mm -hmm. to further limit the scope of the Commission in trying to establish what the truth is. We have the well-known things that I've referred to repeatedly in these interviews, the corruption, uh, the malgovernance. But what is, to me, most seriously is that members of parliament who have just been elected are likely to f f carry out the same pattern as before, to swear their allegiance to the constitution, but they will have a higher loyalty. And that loyalty is to uh, the organization, but within the organization to particular factions within that organization. And that, I think, will impede their capacity and willingness to hold uh, people accountable for wrongdoing. So we have extensive lawlessness, but we also have um, actions which are not necessarily illegal patronage networks which lead to people being appointed mm. to positions and um, n or being given contracts where they are not going to perform adequately and the people who suffer are the poor. Thank you very much for your insight. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking about politics and elections in South Africa.